hi welcome back to my channel well in this video we'll be doing uh, a very important analysis rather a step-by-step -step analysis for an randomized complete block design uh, which is widely used in agricultural and forestry and especially when we are dealing an experiment which is conducting usually in fields for that we'll be using an example of six treatments uh, with respect to four blocks and our response variable is six uh, this grain yield and we want to see whether all these six treatments are significantly different with respect to this response variable very quickly first thing is that we have to get the totals for the treatments then we will use this auto sum function or we can simply write is equal to sum like this is equal to sum uh, then we have to drag all these values put all these like this then in order to get the grand total we'll simply drag it up to this value this 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 cell then if we want to get the average since averages are very important the comparisons are done on the basis of average so simply since we have to get the average for the first treatment across the four blocks then again drag then the important step or the first step in case of uh, analysis of variance in context this design or any design is to get the correction factor which is nothing this is grand total the square of the grand total upon the number of observations. the number of observations here is 24 because we have six treatments and four uh, blocks are the four replications six multiply four is 24 so simply we'll write is equal to then put the value of this grand total and raise to power 2 okay whole divided by 24 so we have the grand total then in order to get that sum of squares for these uh, a total sum of square for that we need to square each and every observation individual observation at the same time we have to add it and then we have to deduct the whole value with the correction factor for that we'll be using a very shortcut method that is sum sq then we will highlight all these values excluding these totals across rows and columns then we have sum of squares but we have to deduct this sum of square with correction factor so we have correction factor then block sum of square for that we need the sum of uh, the totals block totals which we have already calculated and again we'll be using the same function sum sq then up to four blocks okay then the same step we'll be using but here what we will do first we will divide this sum of square divided by six since we have six treatments okay then what we have to do we will deduct this value with correction factor okay we have block sum of square then treatment sum of square the same step use the same function and get the totals which are already calculated okay then here what we will do we will divide this value with the respective number of the blocks that is four then what we have to do the same step that is is equal to this deduct this value with correction factor so we have treatment sum of square then error square is nothing it is uh, total sum of square minus block sum of square minus treatment sum of square so we have error sum of square we have block sum of square and treatment sum of square we'll simply put all these values in this and over table for blocks we will write the degrees of freedom three because we have four blocks four minus one that is three and treatments are six that six minus one is five the error is nothing is the multiplication of both these two or we can say it is t minus one into r minus one that is 15 and we have 24 number of observation that is 23 and minus one so first we will simply copy this block sum of square using this space spatial option otherwise it will not get displayed in this cell then uh, this is blocks then treatments okay then simply over click on this then we have to get this error sum of square okay again the page spatial this page spatial option values okay then to get the mean square of each and every source of variation simply divide each and every sum of square with its respective degrees of freedom then we will simply drag this up to here 
we have mean square due to blocks, mean square due to treatment, and mean square due to error. Then in order to get the F calculator, which is a ratio, variance ratio test, simply the variance of blocks divided by the variance of error. Then to get uh, the uh, F calculated for treatments, the variance of treatments or mean square due to treatments divided by mean square due to error. Then we have to get this tabulated value since we have to compare calculated with the tabulated for well, that will be using a function f i and v then we using a probability value 0 0.05 then its respect to degrees of freedom due to blocks is 3 and the error degrees of freedom is 15 click on that cell okay then similarly we'll use the same function again 0 0.05 the degrees of freedom for treatments is in this cell that is 5 then again the error degrees of freedom click on this enter then we have to get the standard error of difference of mean that is nothing under root of twice mean square due to error divided by the number of replications that is simple sqrt and within that what we will write we will write 2 multiply by mean square due to error okay again we will use this bracket whole divided by four since we have four applications then enter then in order to get this cd value cd is nothing it is the multiplication of the standard error of difference of mean that is under root y cms by r multiply the value of the t at a respective uh, level of significance which we have choose say here in this case 5% uh, with an appropriate error degrees of freedom and in this case it is 15 for that we will use T I and V again the same probability value 0 0.0 sorry 0 0.05 the degrees of freedom is here 15 then we will multiply it with this standard error of difference of mean then we have a cd value now we want to put whether the blocks are significant whether this uh, treatment is significant for that we will use this function if this calculated value is greater than this tabulated value then we'll put this sign s that is significant and if our calculated value is less than the tabulated value which is usually the thumb rule then we will put it like this and s uh, and we will close the two brackets here so here if we will drag it out so we have a clear evidence that i will drag my camera console here what we have done here okay you can see uh, we have uh, used this function if uh, calculated value is greater than g19 this is calculated value greater than h19 then we will say this is significant or this it will get displayed as significant if it is less than simply it will get displayed as non-significant now you can see uh, since the calculated value of test of significance in case of blocks is uh, greater than the tabulated value so we can say the blocking is done perfect so the blocks are significantly different from each other the blocking is proper which is a very important requirement in case of rcbd but in this example you can see the calculated value is uh, less than the tabulated value so all these six treatments with respect to this response variable are not significantly different and the labels here are also ns so uh, we cannot reject the null hypothesis which is usually a uh, set whenever we are doing a certain kind of experimentation so in this case the null hypothesis is all these six treatments are same uh, there is no significant difference among them by using this analysis of variance procedure what it has done it has uh, actually partitioned the overall variation that is the total variation in case of grain yield into two important three important rather one is blocks treatment and error since the error component or the variance due to this error is more in case of uh, treatment so we have every reason to believe that there is no statistically significant difference among the important thing about this uh, analysis is that you can put the values of other
parameter suppose we have only taken one variable we can put the values here we'll simply paste the values of other uh, parameters and we will automatically get the results in terms of ANOVA and critical difference for rest of the parameters so that you can do you are you are having a liberty to do a certain kind of a manipulation which is not recommended by the way but you can do a certain kind of manipulation otherwise what you have to do you have to rewrite the data you have to uh, re-enter the data and do the analysis uh, step by step so this video uh, was just a simple or a basic uh, uh, we can say how to perform the step-by-step -step analysis of randomized complete clock design when you are not having a certain kind of a sophisticated statistical software or statistical package by means of excel by means of this wonderful spreadsheet we can also perform the basic analysis we can also get the critical differences uh, this will save your time since you only have to make these functions or these put this formula only at one uh, time then you have to simply copy paste rest of the parameters on this area uh, and it depends on how many rows or how many columns you have it depends on how many treatments or how many blocks you have uh, so it will save your time also and you are uh, you are having a liberty to do a certain kind of adjustments uh, with respect to your data uh, which is not quite possible in other packages. for that you have to re-enter the data then you have to re-perform the analysis uh, hope this uh, video uh, might be useful to the students especially because i have got the request from various students to make a, a video on uh, data analysis in context to this rc video design in ms excel uh, so if you have any suggestions so you can put them in the comment section below thank you very much